Yo, 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 what is up, y'all? It's Cone back here again tonight with another episode of After the Buzzer, the show where I recap the NBA games from the night. And to answer all your questions, yes, I finally got that haircut that y'all have been asking for. Just like the first night of the season, we had two games tonight with the Sixers and Lakers playing for the second time, and the Bucks and the Clippers playing for their first times this year. And both games were pretty close all throughout, so it was a nice night of basketball. But of course, there are some positive and negatives to take away from it. So let's go ahead and talk about Sixers versus Bucks first. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these videos. This one went all the way down to the wire with James Harden missing a shot right as time was about to expire to try and take the lead. Brooke Lopez got fouled. He knocked down a free throw and missed the second one on purpose. Honestly, one of the best purposeful misses I've ever seen. It went right back to him and the Sixers didn't have time to get a shot up, giving the Bucks their first win of the season. They looked really good in this one. Playing without Chris Middleton, they were still able to hold up against one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference in the Philadelphia 76ers. Giannis is still the best player in the world, and he played like it tonight. Brooke Lopez was incredible defensively. He knocked down some threes, too. One of his best performances that I've seen in quite some time. Drew Holiday was, of course, great defensively, but offensively, he could not buy a bucket in this one. He's one of those guys where it feels like any given night, he can just go four for 19 out of nowhere. They need him to be a bit better until Chris Middleton comes back because they're not going to always have these really gross defensive games like they had tonight. But Drew Holiday's good. I'm sure he'll bounce back. Their shooters knocked down shots. Wesley Matthews had a three that took the lead for them that ultimately won them the game. And all in all, pretty good showing from the Bucks being shorthanded, taking down Philadelphia. But the Sixers are definitely a team I want to focus on a bit more in this section of the video because they've got a lot of positives going on and a lot of negatives. It's really hard to kind of decipher how I feel about them through these first two games. Overall, I think it's positive, but let's go through what's going on with that. Obviously, the biggest positive for them is that James Harden looks back. He looks the best that he's looked in like two years, really since he was hooping and taking over for the Brooklyn Nets a couple years ago when Kyrie and KD were dealing with some injuries and he became a dark horse MVP candidate. I said before the season that I felt a James Harden bounce back coming and it looks like it's here in full swing. He's been incredibly aggressive, not just from three or attacking the basket, but more aggressive in the mid range than I have maybe ever seen him. I saw a stat tonight. It was either that this was the most number of mid ranges that he's ever taken in a game or ever made in a game. One of the two. Either way, it was really impressive how he was dominating in that section of the court. He was also throwing up a lot of great floaters, of course, playmaking for teammates. There were multiple times in the third and fourth quarter where he was scoring almost all of Philly's buckets and basically single-handedly keeping them in this game. In the third quarter with Embiid and Giannis on the bench, Harden came in and almost single-handedly erased a 10-point deficit. He was the reason they were tied all the way up until the end of the fourth quarter. And even though he missed that game winner, which a lot of people talked about, if it weren't for Harden, this game wouldn't have been anywhere close. He looks like he might be back to an MVP caliber form, and I hope that's the case because it's been really fun to watch him go out there and hoop these past two nights. But on the other side, Joel Embiid has not looked like himself at all through these first two games. I'll cut him a bit of slack because it was two really tough matchups, teams that historically have his number in Boston and Milwaukee, but these are two teams they're going to have to face and get through in the playoffs most likely, at least one of these two teams, if they want to make a finals run like they have aspirations to do. And it hasn't just been him missing shots that he typically makes, I'm confident those will fall, but his defense, which has always been a high level of his game, hasn't looked good at all, and for the most part, that's because he looks absolutely gassed out there. There are so many times where he'll go up and miss a shot and fall over onto the ground and he doesn't get back on defense. It'll be like a 10 second possession where the other team doesn't even realize that they have a five on four advantage. Then all of a sudden they notice and they get a wide open look. And even though they don't always fall, you can't be giving these high level contending teams constant open looks when they've got knockdown shooters because there were many times where those looks did fall. And if Embiid had gotten back quicker, they wouldn't have had that advantage and the Sixers might win this game if Embiid was just a little bit better offensively and defensively. I'm not saying this is going to keep up. I think he'll be back to his usual form, but he needs to do it sooner than later because you can't be losing these games by giving the Bucks and Celtics a game up over you, not just in the standings, but in future tiebreakers, you're putting your playoff seating at risk. It sounds a bit kind of overzealous, I guess, to say that this is going to cost them playoff seating down the road in the first two games of the year, but there's a good chance it does. 
Bucks. If they split the season series or go down 1-3 in it by the end of things, then they're going to fall behind, whether it's just in the standings or you get to the end of the year. They've got the same win-loss totals, and they just lose the tiebreaker. In the Eastern Conference this year, it's going to be critical to get the highest seeding that you can because of how deep every team is. You can't be going into the playoffs as the four seed and expect to make this deep run when you've got to go through like Boston and then Milwaukee, or you've got to go through like the Brooklyn Nets or the Miami Heat. You've got to go through like two of those teams and then one of the other teams. You just can't do it. There is way too many great teams in this conference to go down super early in the standings. Embiid has to figure it out, and I'm confident he will. He's Joel Embiid, but right now it kind of just looks like he's out of shape. He starts pretty slow usually, but this has been aggressively slow, and he's now wasted back-to-back -back James Harden masterclasses, so that kind of sucks to see as well. I think Joel Embiid will get it figured out, but for right now, the Sixers are kind of confusing. In the late game of the night, the Clippers took down the Lakers by six points in their first game of the season, and it featured the return of Kawhi Leonard to the court for the first time in a year, and the debut of John Wall as a Los Angeles Clipper, and they both looked really good. Starting with Kawhi Leonard, he had a really solid game. He wasn't doing anything too crazy, but he was playing good defense. He was knocking down his usual crazy mid-range jumpers, hit a three here and there. He was just all around really solid. When he gets back to his full minutes, I believe he only played 21 tonight. It's going to be a big problem for the rest of the league because the Clippers were still beating the Blakers without Kawhi Leonard on the court for most of this game. John Wall also looked really solid. I think he's going to eventually be the full-time starting point guard. I think he just makes more sense than Reggie Jackson. He was making good plays. He was playing solid defense, attacking the basket. Still looked like he had a pretty quick first step, knocking down some mid-range buckets, just doing a bit of everything, which is exactly what the Clippers need from him. And I think people are going to realize throughout the season how much of a steal it was for them to pick him up as their starting point guard. And then just the rest of the team. They played 11 guys, and I'm pretty sure all 11 of these guys could start on a lot of different teams in this league. Their depth is absolutely insane. You know, guys like Nick Batum, Marcus Morris, Luke Kennard, Reggie Jackson, not being towards the top of the guys on this team. Zubats had 14 and 17. He was incredible tonight. The Clippers are just going to be such a problem for not just the West, but whoever has to face them potentially in the NBA Finals, if my prediction is correct. This Clippers team just looks incredibly deep. They're really, really solid. And the Lakers did give them some problems throughout this game. Credit to the Lakers, who we'll talk about in a second. But all in all, I was pretty impressed with what I saw from LA, and I still feel pretty confident in picking them to go to the finals. And then we have the Lakers, who, like the Sixers, are now 0-2, and also very confusing, because I have seen some things that feel pretty positive from the Lakers. In particular, their defense does look a lot better. I know Darvin Ham was harping on that all offseason, talking about how the goal was to get these guys defending. In particular, he talked about how he wanted to use Russell Westbrook as a high-level defender. And tonight, Russ was dominant defensively. He was incredible. He sparked multiple runs just by himself defensively. In the fourth quarter, got a couple of steals, had a couple great great possessions guarding Kawhi Leonard as well. I was really impressed with him. Now, he did not make a single shot. I believe he was 0 for 12, but defensively, at least, it was pretty good. Offensively, of course, he has to be way better than that, but it is a sign of improvement that, you know, shots are going to come and go. He'll eventually make some shots here and there, but him being locked in defensively is a big improvement for the team, as well as the rest of the guys. Pat Bev brings in energy. All in all, they kind of just felt more involved. This team feels like they have more heart than last year's. They've got more hustle, which watching Lakers games last year was such a chore. I actually had kind of fun watching this game as much as it pained me at times because their offense is so hard to watch. But not just in particular their offense, it's their slow down half court offense. Because when they get out and run in transition, this team's pretty fun and actually decently effective. There were multiple times in this game where they kind of went on these big runs. They had a big comeback in the second quarter when they were running up and down the court, going for steals, getting their hands in passing lanes, and immediately pushing the ball down the court. The problem was, at the points where they weren't running up and down the court and just focusing on more of a half-court offense as the Clippers slowed the tempo, it was abysmal. In the third quarter, they give up a 17-0 run because they just could not buy a bucket. And it continues to be a big problem. It was a huge problem in the Warriors game where they shot 10 of 40 from three. And in the video covering that, I said, they're not going to shoot like this every night. Well, I was right. They didn't shoot 10 for 40. The problem is they somehow shot worse at 9 for 45 from three, making them now a combined 19 for 85 on the season from three-point territory, and it's not going to keep up like that. They're not going to be like the worst three-point shooting team of all time. Well, probably, but they have to be better. The problem is, I don't know how they're going to be. 
Now, I don't expect, you know, Russ to shoot 0 from 5 for 3 every night. LeBron still hasn't been able to knock down threes consistently. Patrick Beverly couldn't hit a 3. Kendrick Nunn couldn't buy a bucket. I don't think all of those guys are going to continue to have off nights at the same time, but it's not going to get a ton better. You have to be able to shoot threes. You have to be able to knock down a shot at some point. Teams aren't afraid of them. They're letting them have those shots because no one's going to knock them down. And if they do, you're going to live with it because they're shooting 25, 20, I think it's 22% now on the season from three point territory. That's horrific. It doesn't matter if you're a lot better defensively, if you're good in transition, when the game slows down, you have to be able to get buckets. Late in a game, if the Lakers are down like three and they have to get a half court three, how are they going to do that? The only way they were going to get opportunities is if LeBron kind of just pulls up from three or Anthony Davis pulls up from three or gets a catch and shoot three. That's really the only way they're going to get three point buckets. They just don't have shooters on this team. They desperately have to make trades. I don't know where it's going to come from because they don't have a lot of assets on the team outside of those two first round picks. Maybe it is like a Buddy Heald and Miles Turner trade that helps them, but I have seen some positive things from them. I just think if the shooting doesn't improve, there's no chance they can go anywhere in this league. Those are my thoughts on tonight's games. As always, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed and hit that bell and comment down below letting me know your biggest takeaways from tonight's slate. I appreciate all y'all's support to start the season. It means the world to me. You guys have been absolutely killing it with the support on these videos. I appreciate y'all more than y'all will ever know. As always, thank you so much for watching the video. I will see you all later. Rear one safe back.